Hey folks, Pastor Tritton here from Gloria Day, Hudson, Ohio. Thank you for joining me for another midweek message. I've been thinking a little bit about that that name. I, we've talked about this, or I've talked about this on here before, that would like to think of maybe a, a better title or something along those lines. I've had some fun suggestions. Uh, Pastor's Ponderings, uh, Wednesday Wisdom. Ooh, that sounds good. Um, uh, Wednesday Wonderings, uh, Midweek Moments, uh, Midweek Musings really strong with the alliteration. Uh, so that's fun. Um, but I, I want to get to uh, looking ahead to this Sunday. Uh, this coming Sunday, November 24th, is the last Sunday of this church year. So when, when I bring this out next week, we're going to be talking about the beginning of the next church year, talking about Advent. But here at the end of the church year, we continue to talk about the end, the capital T, capital E, the end. And so when Christ returns, the judgment day, uh, all those wonderful things that come with, uh, with the end of time. And one of the things that I mentioned last week is that we have this little problem when we think about the end with the idea that this is going to be soon. That Jesus says, I am coming soon in, in, in the book of Revelation. And uh, honestly, it's been about 2,000 years since Jesus ascended into heaven. And for people who live, you know, at 75 to 100 years, 2,000 years does not feel soon. Now, I guess maybe to put this into a little bit of context, if you go back to Genesis chapter 3, when, Jesus, when God promises to send a Savior for the first time, uh, Adam and Eve never saw the Savior. And depending upon how you put the timeline of the Bible together and what you believe about all of those things in the beginning, really about the, the, the smallest amount of time between Adam and Eve and, and Jesus that you can come up with is about 4,000 years. So God made a promise that he would send a Savior, and the soonest that that Savior came was about 4,000 years later. And it makes me wonder, you know, what exactly is soon to an eternal God? To a God who creates time and lives outside of time, and, you know, there's a lot of sci-fi type of things that we could be thinking about with this. But I do think that there's an actual complication here for us as we interact with God who is eternal and we experience this as temporal. Um, there's a beautiful uh, moment in John chapter 8, it's actually verse 58, where Jesus is talking with the Pharisees and with the Jews of his time and he makes this kind of cryptic statement where he says, before Abraham was, I am. Not before Abraham was, I was, but he's kind of saying that even in this given moment where he's talking with those individuals, he's still all the way back there before when Abraham was. So when we start talking about soon and uh, the coming of the end, it's probably good for us to take some wisdom from Mark chapter 13. And, and that's actually where our gospel lesson is coming from this Sunday again. So the wisdom from Mark chapter 13, Jesus is talking about all these signs and all of these things that take place at the end. And he says, no one knows. No one knows the day or the hour. We know that there have been plenty of people who have tried to predict exactly when Jesus would return. There are lots of examples of that across history, and it's just foolishness. It, Jesus flat out says, no one knows. That even in that moment, he himself didn't know. Not the angels in heaven, they didn't know. But only the Father knows. And, and so for us to say, well, clearly it's this date, that's ridiculous. What Jesus calls us to do is actually to face each day with hope, and humility. Hope recognizing that he has made us a promise, that he is coming again. And humility to say, I, I, I don't know when that's going to be. I'm just going to face today. I'm going to, I'm going to walk in faith today in this moment and, you know, and let that be enough. 
that we just take each day, each moment, and receive it by faith, receive God's gifts, receive God's grace and forgiveness and salvation, and, and live as his people, knowing that you can't control the future. You know, we might try to, and I'm not saying we shouldn't make plans for the future, that we shouldn't be wise to you know, continue to, to live our lives. You know, that makes sense. Uh, God has given us a, a wisdom in terms of how to live in this world. But we hold on to this world lightly, and we have a humility to look to the future. We are able to do this because we have an incredible source of hope. We know what Jesus has done to claim us and to make us his own. And we, ha we have a neat confession of this reality that we live in, uh, in the classic historic liturgy. It's called the Memorial Acclamation. And sometimes it's placed right after the words of institution in the, um, in the service of the sacrament. Uh, and in this memorial acclamation, what, what is said is, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ is coming again. Christ has died. My sins are paid for. My past is atoned for. Uh, I'm good. Even my future sins are paid for. But uh, in this moment, my, my history and everything, it, it is atoned for, and I have confidence with my relationship with God because Christ has died. Christ has risen. And because Christ is risen from the dead, I have a new life that I live here and now, that, that I live in love of God and love of my neighbors. And Christ is coming again. It reminds us that this world is not our home, but we live here as aliens and strangers, and we look forward to God keeping his promise to come again to judge the living and the dead and to raise us to glory. This, this saying, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again, uh, it, it reminds me of something that um, my, my yoga teacher, Maria, says in, uh, as we get started in, in class sometimes. She talks about something called a, a drishti. And when she talks about the drishti, she talks about it as an anchor that, that keeps us connected to the moment that we're in. It, it is intended to refocus the mind, to keep us mindful of what we're actually doing. In this case, the confession, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ is coming again, it, it's, it roots us in, in our, our moment in light of our past and in light of our future and in light of the hope that we have in Jesus. It's a form of, of spiritual mindfulness. We tell ourselves the truth about our situation and we fix our eyes on Jesus, knowing that an end is coming and it's okay because Christ has died and Christ has risen. He, he's, he's set us up for that moment. And so we, we look to Jesus, the one who has died, risen, and is coming again to face the things of this world with hope and humility. Thanks for being with me. Uh, if this is useful to you, please share it on, on social media. Better yet, tell a friend about it. I know that when I listen to a, a podcast or I watch a video, it's quite often because somebody said, you got to check this out. So if that's worth your time and you think it's worth theirs, please share it. If it's not, then don't. Just kidding. Um, one of the other things that you could do uh, if you like this is you can subscribe to the audio of this on uh, Apple Podcasts. And you can subscribe to get these videos uh, on, on YouTube, on the uh, church's uh, YouTube page. God's blessings. I hope to see you on Sunday.